Hello everyone, this is um, Professor Lee again. Um, we are going to continue to investigate chapter 2.7 and topic is <clears throat> measures of spread of the data. Sometimes they call this uh, measures of variation, right? Measures of variation and you know basically what we are trying to do in this chapter is that we're trying to come up with a number that describe the spreadness of the data set, right? Spreadness of the data set. So <clears throat> in our previous um, chapter, seven point, I mean 2.7 part A, we talked about range, right? Range was simply highest value minus the lowest value. But we also checked out the problems with those range because range wouldn't really capture the what happens in the middle of those data set, right? <clears throat> it's just high value and low value, that's not really accurate enough. So we also learned uh, two different measures. One is variance. Another one was standard deviation. Okay, so <clears throat> for variance and standard deviation, we had a slightly different symbol, right? For sample, we use S square. For standard deviation, for sample standard deviation, we use S. And for population, We use sigma square and sigma for those symbol. And we also check out those defining formula and computation formula. And also, we also learned how to use TI-84 to calculate all those um, variance and standard deviation and you know, some other uh, measures, right? Okay. So <clears throat> as a continuation, we are going to learn about um, z-score, right, z-score. So, you know, you can, you can read this, of course, standard deviation is useful when comparing data value. It comes from different um, data set. Um, if the data set have different mean and standard deviation, then comparing the data value directly can be misleading. Um, meaning um, something like this. You know, sometimes you are comparing these two data set, but what if the original data in both set are really different? What if one is the one data set describes the price of mailbox in certain town. And the other data set describes uh, price of the house in a certain town. And of course, the mailbox compared to the price of house is a lot cheaper, a lot smaller number. And, you know, the price of house is going to be a lot bigger and more expensive than the mailbox, of course. So, even if you compare those two uh, variants, uh, variance for mailbox naturally is going to be a smaller number, and variance and standard deviation for you know house price of house is going to be naturally bigger number. So comparing those two is not just it could be quite misleading, and also <clears throat> depends on you know different data it's really difficult to see exact, you know, the spreadness and exact location of yours. So to, <clears throat> for such data value, each data value calculate how many standard deviation away from the mean is the, val the value is. So which means they come up with this 
special measure called Z. Z sometimes we call this Z score, and we're gonna study this extensively in later chapter. Chapter starting from chapter six, we are going to study uh, this Z score a lot. But this this chapter here in two point seven, they briefly introduce this Z score because this describe what this describe how many standard deviation that you are away from the mean. That's the Z score, right? I mean, you know, even though this is mathematic formula, I know um, we don't really like math, a lot of you, right? A lot of us, right? But let's think about what they're trying to do here. Now, this is data point. What about this? What's this? Remember <clears throat> in our last class, I asked you to memorize those eight symbols. This is one of them, right? Does anyone remember? This is a sample mean. So if you just take a look at the top part, x minus mu, that means the distance or difference between one particular data point from the mean, that difference is just x minus x bar, right? Now, but you are actually dividing that difference in proportion of s. Now, what's s? This is sample standard deviation, right? Sample standard deviation. So you are looking at on one particular data point, uh, in difference between that data point from the mean in proportion to the standard deviation of the data set. That value is going to be what we call the z score, right? So, z score for each data point. That's what we are going to discuss. Now, of course, <clears throat> this is formula for the sample, this is a formula for the population. What's the difference between these two? Well, nothing much except they are using symbol for sample here and they are using symbol for population here. This is mu, population mean. This is sigma, population standard deviation, right? So as I recommend, you definitely try to memorize those eight symbols that I showed you in our last class. Okay, so Let's um, talk about this um, example. It says, average height of male, 20 year old or older is 69.1 inch, with standard deviation 2.8 inch. You know, this is, I don't think this is an actual accurate result. This is just a hypothetical number you know for this particular question right so average number for female in this case so 10 year old or older is 63.7 inch with the standard deviation um, 2.7 inch right okay so based on this information um, who is relatively taller, right? It's Kevin height is 83, or Candace height is 76. Now, <clears throat> Kevin is quite tall, seven, I mean 83, when the average is 69.14 male. Candace was also very tall when um, average is 63.7, her height is 76. But, you know, within their own, the same sex, same gender, um, who's taller? Is it Kevin taller or is Candace taller? And how do we figure that one out? Well, we are going to convert this point and this point to the z-score, and we can compare the z-score. Right? Remember the formula, right? Z score formula right here. I mean, 
decoy sample and population, it's a basically the same formula. Um, and I guess this number, average number, I guess we assume that this is for entire population. So we are going to use that population formula, which is x minus mu over sigma, right? So this is Kevin's height, and this is male average, right? So this is x, this is mu. And what about this? This is the sigma, the standard deviation of that. And that's for Kevin. And for Candace, this is her height, also x, right? And this is the female average. And this is the standard deviation. So if you type it up in the calculator, then you get these two. They are both very, very tall. Indeed, this is like super unusually tall, right? But getting these, comparing these two numbers, this is higher, this is bigger number. That means relative to their own gender, Kevin is actually taller than Candace because of the Z score, right? He got the bigger Z score. And that's how we compare with the Z score, right? Okay. All right, let's talk about this um, next um, example. Two students, John and Ali, from different high school, um, wanted to find who had higher GPA when they compare to their own, own school, right? So John and Ali, they are from different high school. John's GPA, was 3.85 and school average, school mean, that means school average was 3.0 and school standard deviation is 0 0.7. Ellie's um, GPA, that I don't think they are 4.0, um, full point, they, I think they have different scheme. Anyway, GPA was 87 when school average was 80 and standard deviation in 11. So within their own high school ranking, who did better? Is John did better or Ali did better? You can't compare these two GPA, right? These two GPA is like naturally in a different scale, it's different. So you need to, in a way, rationalize this and make it a standard score. That standard score is what we call the Z score. Right, so this is the formula, right? X minus mu over sigma. So for case for John, this was his score and this is school average and divide that by 0 0.7. We are looking for the first line. We're looking at the first line, right? And that's what we get. You know, when you, Type this in the calculator. This is how you type it. I'm going to open up the parentheses and 3.85. Subtract 3.0, or you can just skip 0, 0.0, but well, let's just say 0, 0.0 and close it. And then divide 0 0.7, hit return. Right? So this is exactly how I work, this is exactly how you're going to type it in your calculator, right? Without this parentheses, you are going to get an answer far from this, right? So you need to put this parentheses, right? And this is for Ali, and this is pretty much the same story, which we are actually putting all this number in the second line, 78, I mean 87, 80, 11, and that's 0 0.64. So, who did better? Who's got the bigger Z score? John's got the bigger Z score. So John did better, right? So John has better GPA when they compare to his own school because 
John's Z score is 1.21, while LE's GPA in Z score is 0 0.64. I mean, they both did well, but John did a little better, right? Okay, and how do we know? Well, you can, like I said, you can't just compare these two, right? There's no point of comparing these two because they're in different scale. So you gotta put them into Z score and compare to Z score. Then you know who did better, right? Okay. Okay. Right. Again, these are the symbols that I want you to memorize, right? Memorize. So we have sample size, lowercase n, population size, uppercase n. Sample mean, x bar. Population mean, mu, right? This, you can write it like this, right? And sample standard deviation, s. Population standard deviation. Does anyone remember how we called this? This is sigma, and it looks like this, right? It's like a six in a tilted way. Right? And variance, of course, just put the square and same for population, sigma square, just like that. So, like I said many times, I want you to just memorize these symbols, right? I just want you to memorize these symbols. Okay, empirical rule, empirical rule. Now, this is Another very common topics um, that you always see in the midterm and the final, right? This is one of the common topics that we see midterm and the final. And you know, you know what? Um, not just because this will be in our exam, I want you to understand what they're talking about here, what's going on here. I want you to understand what's going on here. And it's you know, if you really think about this, it's quite, quite amazing, right? Whoever found this and make it as an empirical rule, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, you know, so let me explain what this rule is all about, right? So I really want you to concentrate on this. Well, let's, let's take a look at this one. What do they say? They say something like this. Approximately 68% of the entire data will lie within one standard deviation from the mean. That means within one standard deviation from the mean, that means you go up one standard deviation and you go down one standard deviation. And that's what they mean by this. Let me tell you another and possible related example to this. Let's say we took our midterm exam and professor told us, oh, this time our class average was 70 and standard deviation was five, right? Was five, okay. So that means it's like this. Let's say this graph shows the distribution of the class exam result. Why did I draw it like that? Because this type of distribution applies uh, most commonly. Meaning, let's say if the class average is 70, what does that mean? That means something like this, right in the middle. What do you think this value? 70, of course because that's the average value, right? Professor told us that uh, class average was 70. And, you know, our professor also told us his standard deviation was five. Okay, according to this empirical rule, this part, if you go one standard deviation up from this, if you go one standard deviation up, that value is going to be what? That value is going to be 75, right? If you go one standard deviation down from this, from 70, what would that be? 
that should be 65, right? If you go from 70, you go five down, and that will form this interval, right? That will form this interval. According to this empirical rule, how many percent of student got their exam score anywhere between, in this case, 65 to 75? How many percent? Well, you guessed it right, 68%. So 68% of uh, our class scored their midterm exam anywhere between 65 to 75. Now, how do you know it's, you know, about, it's about 68%? How do you know it's not like you know, 40% or 30% anything? How do you know? Who said this is 68%? Well, I didn't say that. Who said this? Empirical rule said this. Empirical rule, said, rule says, if I know my average of the data, if I know the standard deviation, I can figure out all these different proportion. Look at the second part. They say about 95% lie within two standard deviation only. So the mu minus two times the standard deviation and mu plus two times the standard deviation. So in our example, if I go one standard, if I go one more standard deviation, what do you think this value is going to be when standard deviation is five? Of course, this is 80, right? If you go from 65, you might, if I go one more down, on one standard deviation down, that should be 60 then. So, between 60 and 80. How many percent of our class, students from our class, got their exam score anywhere between 60 to 80? When our class average is 70 and when the standard deviation is 5. How many percent? Well, you guessed it right. 95%. And how do you know? because the empirical rule says so, right? Because the empirical rule says so. So, empirical rule, you know, if you go, actually, the third part, if you go three standard deviation from the mean up and down, so mu minus three standard deviation, mu plus three standard deviation, that means if you go one more up, that should be 85. If you go one more standard deviation down, that should be 55. So from 55 to 85, how many percent of students got this score? 99.7%. It was like that, right? And who said that? Empirical who said that. Now, there's something that I didn't really tell you before we start this empirical rule. I mean, it says it right there, but I didn't specifically tell you. And that's this part right here. It says what? If distribution is roughly bell shape. What's a bell shape? That's a bell shape. You know, it looks like a bell, right? So does it have to be perfect bell shape? No, not really. But if it's like, roughly bell shape, then we can apply this empirical rule. That's what this is saying. So empirical rule is excellent, but you really um, have to deal with a distribution shapes like a bell, bell shape distribution, right? Okay, so, you know, if I were you, I'll probably take a note, the title empirical rule one standard deviation away from the mean, up and down, 68%. Two standard deviation up and down from the mean, 95%. Three standard deviation up and down, 99.7%. That's practically everything, right? Everything. Right? I'll probably write that down, right? Or at least know where to find it, right? Okay, so this is like, graphical representation of the empirical rule. This is the average value right here in the middle. 
if you go one standard deviation up, one standard deviation down, it'll form this interval, which will cover 68% within one standard deviation. If you go one more, go one more, up and down, that's a 95% and two standard deviations. If you even go one more up and down, so that's a three standard deviation away, and that is 99.7%, practically everything. Yeah, practically everything. So, you know, I'll definitely mark this page, right? Because it's nice, it nicely describes the empirical rule, right? And whenever that I have a question to deal with, I'll definitely refer to this, right? All right. <clears throat> this is um empirical rule example. This is an example of empirical rule. So let's say um you became a CEO of this um, radio company called Sunshine Radio, who uh, making radio, right? And <clears throat> the lifespan, the playing lifespan of your product is normally distributed. Now, what does that mean? What does that, what does that mean to be normally distributed? Normally distributed means it's bell shape, like this graph right here. Right? And your lifespan of your radio is average 600 hours, mu 600, with the standard deviation 100 hours, right, 100 hours. Okay, so what is the percentage of all radio that will last anywhere from 600 to 700. You know, remember the empirical rule? They are saying this is 600 right here, and that's a 700. Because why? Because what was the standard deviation? Standard deviation was 100. What was the mean? Mean was 600. From 600, you go one standard deviation up. So in this graph, it's definitely this interval right here. How many percent? 34. Why? Because both one up and down covers 68. Half of the exact half of that is 34. So that must be 34% right there. Right? And who said that? Empirical rule said that. Right? According to the empirical rule, one standard deviation up and down, 68. So this is just one standard deviation up from the mean, right? Mean 600, go up 100. So that's going to be 34%. Now let me ask you one more question. You know, if this much, this blue area is 34, what do you think is this area? 70 per, 700 and up, how much is this going to be? Right, anyone. Knowing that exact half, exact half from here is going to be 50% here and 50% there. So from 50%, from here to here is 34. So that area right here must be 50 minus 34, which is um, 16, 16%, like that. So that area right here must be 16%. Okay, then let me ask you another question. If you say uh, in your warranty, pro warranty program for your product, if you say, oh, if it breaks down before 700 hours, 
I am going to give you full money back. If you say, um, B4, if you break down B4 700, then full money back. Money back guarantee. Then, you know, how many percent will break it down B4 700? Think about it. Let me draw another graph, say single graph right here. We know that the middle is 600. We know that, let's say 700 here. We know that this is 16%. Then B4 700, that means all this, right? All this. So everything should be 100%, right? So 100 minus 16, 84, right? 84 percent. So if you give 70 hours money back guarantee, then 84 percent of your product, then you have to give um, full money back, which means um, you 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 bankrupt pretty soon, right? What what kind of manufacturing company will will stand if they have to do a full refund for 80? you know, 84% of their product. So 70 hours, 700 hours is really not a good idea. If they do like if this, if this is 500 maybe, and if 500 and down, you know, if this is 500 here, then this proportion, how much is that going to be? Well, that's another 16% right there because you know that this is going to be 34%, right? Let me go back to this, right? So this is 34, so from here downward, that's a 16%. So if you advertise 500, if you, if it breaks down before 500, then I'll give you full money, but then you expect to do a money back for 16% of your sales, right? So that's how we use this empirical rule, and that's how this empirical rule works, right? Okay. Empirical rules. Let's say um, this um, cholesterol, serum cholesterol of um, 54 female patients, a family doctor has the following result. Um, Average the cholesterol was 60 and standard deviation was 5. Right? So determine the percentage of all patients would have serum HDL within two standard deviations of the mean according to the empirical rule. Two standard deviations from the mean. You know, if I draw this, right, this situation, then it should look like this, and the middle value must be equal to 60. If I go one standard deviation up, that's going to be what, 65, because standard deviation of five. If I go one standard deviation down, right, then then should be 55. If I go one more standard deviation up, then that should be 70. If I go down one more standard deviation. That means that's a 50. So between 50 to 70, between 50 to 70, that's a two standard deviation up and down. Now, what was the percentage of two standard deviation up and down? 95, right? Two standard deviation up and down, 95%. Right from here, from here to here, this interval, okay? So, I mean, they, they have a, I mean, this is a better graph, right? From 60, go one standard deviation up and down, two standard deviation up and down, from 50 to 700, that's a 95%. Now, look at this question here. Determine the percentage of all patients that have serum um, 
HDL between 55 to 70. So from 55 to 70, is 55 to, oh no, 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 it's not, not this. From 55 to 70, this, right, this one. So, you know, let me go back to the, the graph, given graph. This given graph, not only, uh, you know what, let me get out of all this so I can clear all this. Join my note. So if you go to this um, original uh, graph, not only it gives you this percentage of 68, 95, and 99.7, it gives you every subsection percentage of these, right? So you can, def I mean, right? So you can definitely graph a similar graph for that question that we have right here, right? One standard deviation up and down, 34 each. Two standard deviation from here to here is 13.5. And 2.34, and 0 0.15. So from 55 to 70, all we really need to do is add this and this and this. All right. So if we add this, 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 that's 81.5%. So 81.5% of patient will have um, cholesterol level between 55 to 70, right? just like that. And that's how we work with this empirical rule, right? Okay. So that's the wrap for this lecture, right? That's the end of this lecture. Okay,